The impact of war is a subject that anime has never been afraid to tackle. There are dozens of mecha military anime, each one dealing with the various phases of war. Strife, death, starvation, marginalization, it's nothing new, but I must say I have never seen it handled quite as it was in 86. What's up anime fans and manga readers? Thank you for tuning in to the latest episode of You Should Probably Watch. Our focus today is on the highly acclaimed dystopian sci-fi anime, 86. Originally written as a light novel series by author Asado Asado, the title was adapted into an anime by A1 Pictures, the first season of which ran from 2021 to 2022. So what exactly is it about? The Republic of San Magnolia boasts of a bloodless war against a robotic hive mind of the Giardian Empire, a war without casualties completely automated. Big lie. While the silver-haired elite live comfy lives behind fancy walls oblivious to the truth, the real fighters are ripped from the 86th district of the Republic. These people look different and are thus perceived as racially inferior. They are ostracized to camps outside the safety of the walls and forced to pilot mechs against the enemy. Enter Vladelina Melize, one of the deuteragonists. She's a handler, a Magnolian responsible for giving remote orders to the disposable fighters on the ground, all behind the safety of the walls, of course. Vladelina is ostracized among her peers for advocating for better treatment of the 86. As a sort of punishment, she is assigned to manage a notorious group of soldiers known as the Spearhead Squadron, infamous for driving their previous handlers mad. Here, she comes into contact with the other deuteragonist, Shine Nozin, the captain of this unit haunted by his past. He bears the nickname Shinigami, or Reaper, a name with a rather dark history. You see, Shin is infamous for being the only survivor of every unit he's been in, and the nickname is a burden he carries with the weight of his fallen comrades. The automated soldiers of the enemy empire are robots, sure, but they're powered by organic processors, which is a less morbid way of saying human brains. Shin, as a leader, is tasked with the haunting responsibility of ensuring that his friends and comrades are not harvested by the enemy, which is a less morbid way of saying he shoots them in the head. This guy has a lot of baggage, but things begin to change when his unit is assigned a new handler, Lena. The story sets up an interesting contrast between its two main characters, one born into a world of comfort and excess, and the other having to fight for everything he has. As Vladelina tries to change the system from within, Shin and his crew devise a plan to escape their cruel fate. Working together forces them to acknowledge that their perceptions of each other's worlds may not be quite as they believed. Meanwhile, the mystery behind the origins of the brain-stealing robot swarm that threatens to wipe out humanity looms above them like a threat. What lies beyond those barren plains, beyond that legion of killer machines on the horizon? Whatever you think, I assure you, it's probably wrong. I went into this expecting some sort of Attack on Titan clone with robots instead of titans, but boy, I was wrong. Not a chance. 86 is a masterpiece of high-octane mecha action and impressive world building. The societal structure and dynamics put in place within the Republic of Magnolia present a striking parallel to real-world oppression and discrimination against races considered, for no valid reason, to be inferior to others. It explores the question of complacency in such a system with individuals who are aware of the problems of society but choose to remain silent because it benefits them. It's uncommon to see an anime handle such heavy themes with as much tact as 86 does. The Imperial Machines have something of a hierarchical structure as well, with well-defined classes for different forms of assault, communications disruption, long-range artillery, infantry swarms, and so many more. Each class is uniquely designed and some higher ranking machines are as intriguing and fascinating as the human characters themselves. Speaking of the human characters, the focus is placed primarily on the titular 86 and they get most of the spotlight in development. Shin, Raiden, Anju, Theo, and Karina, each member of the core is bursting with personality and I was surprised by how much I was rooting for them at the end. On the other side of the wall, Lena is easily one of the best written female characters in modern anime. A protagonist in her own right, capable, smart and logical, but unafraid to show weakness and emotional vulnerability. Despite being miles apart and never even seeing their faces, she increasingly feels like she's part of the crew, but she knows deep down that she's not one of them and she struggles not to get left behind. Every character is more than they seem. Every death stung like a wound. Am I crying? No, I'm not crying. 
You're crying. And every moment was accompanied by a simultaneously heart-pounding and heart-wrenching soundtrack by Hiroyuki Sawano and Kota Yamamoto, the team behind Attack on Titan, amongst other things. The animation is top-notch, and although it is uncommon to say this about an anime, the cinematography, the way each frame is laid out and presented, is among the best there is in the medium. There's only one season of 86 out at the moment, but a season 2 can't be far down the line. Watch this show if you can, and if it doesn't grab you immediately, just give it a couple episodes. Take it from me, you'll be hooked before you know it. Anyway, that's all we have for today, folks. Do you agree with our pick? Maybe there are some cool facts about 86 that I left out. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the notification bell to get regular updates on new videos. I make awesome anime and manga content like this every week, so be sure to check them out. Thanks for watching, and bye for now!